Now, in line with kind of Karu and with Rotary values, this is a positive meeting to allow candidate voices to be heard. We ask for no interruptions. The candidate will all be available to speak with you afterwards over a cup of tea or coffee or cake. We just ask you to respect that. Murray, our bell ringer, will keep us all on track and I ask you to respect his time frames. So to begin the evening, can I invite the mayoral candidates, Alma and Gary, to come to the front. The mayoral candidates have six minutes to speak, to introduce themselves, to talk about whatever's important to them, and to stand for mayor. The bell will ring once at five minutes thirty, and twice at your six minutes maximum time. As well as introducing yourself, you've been given two questions to respond to at this time. After you've spoken, after you've both spoken, you'll be given a third question and again have another two minutes to reply to that. For your information, the questions sent out to mayoral candidates were, one, how do you envisage working with others in council, especially those who do not agree with you or not agree with other council members? In other words, how do you handle conflict? The second question is about accessibility and transparency being an issue for councils throughout our country. I know there's some changes going underway at South Waikato, but I just want to <coughs> bring this question out. What are your thoughts about council meetings being live streamed and available for public perusal? In this case, we're going with alphabetical order. Adama, would you like to start first? Thank you. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Arma Napo and I am standing for the mayoralty for South Waikato District Council. Firstly, I'd like to thank Pride and Patarudu, Rotary and also the Timber Museum. It's been a little while since I've been here at night time, but the Timber Museum looks absolutely fabulous. It's such a beautiful jewel in the crown of South Waikato and it's an honour and a privilege to be here this evening to be able to share my ideas, my thoughts and my aspirations for the district. So like I said, my name is Roma Napo. I was born and raised in Tokoroa. I have three beautiful children and my parents were Lloyd and Gaynor Napo. My parents uh, lived in Kinleaf and for those of you that are old enough to know, Kinleaf used to have a village there and that's where I was born and raised. And they took over a security firm called Armagard in the early 70s. And so my parents have always been in business in South Waikato. And then my father, up until he passed away, was the minister of the Anglican Church. I have three children. They all attend school in Kutaruru and they go to the Whareka. They're really important to me and so is family and with that in mind I decided to stand as a councillor six years ago and I was successful enough to be a councillor in the Tukuru Ward. From there I've been appointed as the Chairperson of the Corporate and Regulatory Committee and I have had the absolute pleasure of chairing some of the most charged and complicated meetings you can possibly imagine. All of that really reflects the fact that in my daytime career I run a successful law firm and I've been a practicing lawyer for over 23 years. And so when I received the questions from Raywan and I thought about how to answer those, the first one really is about conflict <coughs> resolution. How do you deal with conflict? How do you get a group of people in a room that, for, in terms of council, for the majority won't know each other? How do you bring that group of people together? How do you get them to respect that you can have different ideas? How do you manage any of those things? In my professional career, I'm used to being in uncomfortable spaces and having to bring people together. And so the number one question for the candidates here and for myself and uh, Councillor Petley as well, the number one question is, what's your motivation? What do you want to achieve and why are you standing for council?
For me, the answer is really clear. It's my community. When I was young and I used to travel outside of the district, I used to go places and people used to ask me, where are you from? Oh, I'm from Tokoroa, Tano, Tino, the South Waikato. And people would go, oh, is it safe to live there? I'm so sick and tired of people having a negative perspective of the South Waikato. Six years ago, when I started on council, my main goal was to be a champion for our district and to make sure that people understood what amazing and unique things we have here in our community. The Pataruru community is absolutely amazing. Pride and Pataruru have just celebrated their birthday on Saturday night. I was able to attend their celebrations and hear all of the wonderful things that they've achieved. Interestingly enough, the Pataru, Pride and Pataruru as you add your business body, you've been able to achieve some things that Tokoro hasn't. We have only recently set up a business body because we used to have tans and that fell away a few years ago. And so Pataruru has a lot to offer the district. And in terms of how I deal with conflict, it's really simple. Bring people together with the things that are common to all of us. Let's not sit across the table from one another with a huge chasm in the middle. Let's sit next to each other with one goal in mind, which is to make sure that we work towards our community. The second question that I was asked, and I'm probably taking uh, some, some sort of privilege in you know, interpreting them the way that I want to, but transparency, as a lawyer, I took an oath to the Crown to be transparent, to protect people's interests. I have a very high level of professionalism when it comes to people having confidence in my ability to be honest, because let's face it, as a lawyer, you take people's money, you take people's secrets, and you have to make sure that you protect them. Council has just had installed this week computer equipment to make sure that we can live stream and we can actually make technology part of our council process so that if you're unable to attend council meetings that you can actually participate and be involved in those online. So the last question is about whether or not I think live streams are, are important and I absolutely do. It's part of our democratic society. So I think that's my cue to stop. <laughs> and I just want to thank you all for coming this evening. It's a wonderful turnout. And no matter what you do, just remember to vote. We have very low voting participation in South Waikato. So I really am glad to see you all here. And I want to talk to every single one of you before we go home at midnight. <laughs> thank you. Good evening, everybody. Um, Gary Pitley, born and bred here, eldest son of Marshall and Sally, and it's quite a quite a surreal feeling for me to be standing here because my dad was actually the manager of the mill here when it was running last and turned the lights out. So um, it's good to be here and see the changes that are happening. So I was born and bred here, educated here at uh, St Mary's Convent wasn't a very good Catholic boy, so got sent to Araka Heights. <laughs> <laughs> then, then went from there to high school, I did two years of high school, and then still wasn't performing to my, to my top grade, so I got sent to boarding school for two years. But I came back, I came back and, and, and my whole life, I guess, around, and, and, and I'm, I'm not ashamed to say, and stand here before you and say that I'm from a working class, and, and I, I was educated to school cert level, but I come from a privileged background in respect that if you didn't like a job back when I finished school, you could just go to another one. And, and, and when you look at the changes that were here when I first started work, there are a lot. And those, those opportunities aren't there for our youth. So I guess what I'd like to see going forward for, for our community and for our district 
as to our youth, policies around our youth and policies around our, our, um, <coughs> our senior sits, if you like. And I think Raywin touched on it back in the day, over the 50 years of Pride and Patarudu on Saturday night, that uh, the age group around, or the percentage around 60 year olds back then was 10%. And that is, that's out the gate now. I mean, that they would have quadrupled on you. So we need to do those. We need to develop, as a council, policies around those areas, around getting work for our youth. We have the trade training centre over in Tupperdor, which is great things, but if we haven't got the work once we've trained them, then we're not winning the battle. So I guess from that point of view, and I, I bit remiss and my wife sitting over there, we got married very young, I wanted to be the typical Kiwi boy and be an all black. But I got married at 19, so that was out the window pretty quick. <laughs> but I've been married to Aria for the last 47 years. We, uh, we have four boys, three of them, one was in Perth, and three live here, two work at Kinneath in the stores, and one is a department manager at Countdown. So I guess what you see would be is what you get. There's no, no fairy, fairy lights on just me. But I think what the difference, and I think for both of us, we bring something totally different to the table. And, and I guess from my point of view is that having that, not just having that, uh, that working class background, it allowed me to have involvement in community groups as well with sport, with the credit union where I was a, where I was a chairman and, and other areas like that. I worked at Kinley for 21 years in the pulp and paper industry. I was a senior delegate for 15 of those 21 years. So I guess from that, just touch on that first question, conflict. Conflict is sort of second nature to me because we were, we were in your union delegate out on the Kinley site. You're the mother, the father, the brother. You're everybody's, everybody's best friend until they don't get the decision that they want. So that, that holds, and working with the new council, if elected as your mayor, then working with whoever that may be as elected members holds no fears for them. The second question around accessibility and transparency, I, I have no issues with that because that's all part of it. <coughs> the only issue that I do have, or, or, or reservation I do have, if people come in with their own equipment and film the meetings and then take it away and alter it for their own benefit, then that's not good. So if we can do this on, 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 on the transparency aspect, then that covers all those bases and we know that the real stuff is getting out there. So. Um, for me and my boys and that with the, with the involvement in the sport and I play rugby and take round. I actually belong to the club where I almost mum and dad for, for years and Lloyd was a Lloyd was a president of Hostel Albus. I was a president of Hostel Albus. I was a coach and, and uh, I actually joined the referees association as well. So I was refereeing in the morning up to under 19 and that was my training that I go and play rugby in the in the afternoon. But the other side of that was because the referees got first first choice on the All Blacks tickets and uh, and the White Blacks tickets, so that, that was sort of a, a bonus out of that. So I guess in essence, what I'm what I'm what I'm saying to you is that if you just want someone like me, the salt of the earth, if you like, then that's your choice. But whoever is whoever is elected, I'm sure that they will do the best job that they can do. And notwithstanding the fact that there are a lot of big changes and huge changes going forward, and, and even with the, with the candidates for the elected members coming up, it's going to be huge because there's some good talent in here. Thank you, Murray. <laughs> Thank you very much. Where do you see the future of community funded groups and how will you support them as mayor? 
So by community funded, do you mean funded by council payers? Community, council community funded, right. Okay, so council has many community contracts um, that it supports. And first and foremost, those are funded by ratepayers, of which everyone in South Waikato is part of. So for a start, they're absolutely vital. And I spoke with um, someone this morning, Debbie, was it you? Uh, sorry, this afternoon about um, the Timber Museum and the fact that Council supports the Timber Museum financially. But I also shared with her and said, but if you thought about the amount of volunteer hours it takes to run any community group, that far outweighs any contribution that Council has the ability to make. Because for anyone sitting in the audience that's part of the house shuttle, part of Pride and Patataru, part of the Timber Museum, um, part of any really volunteer organisation, the real value of an organisation comes from the people within it and comes from the community that they serve. And so Council must and has an obligation to continue to support those organisations. And that unfortunately has to be funded by the ratepayers and um, I think that it's good use of uh, ratepayer money. Two seconds. Two, two seconds. Thirty seconds? Okay. Well, I've, been, I've been involved with so many um, not-for-profit organisations that have contributed to the, to the community and um, I just think they're absolutely vital and they're important and for my biggest concern is getting a younger generation involved in these organisations. How do we actually um, encourage a younger generation to actually care and be part of um, those community organisations? So that's a slight segue, but it's, it's very important. Kia ora, thank you. Yeah, my, my little is a lot different than I was actually in because the, the community groups, they serve a purpose that, that we can't run ourselves as council. So they, and, and a lot of the voluntary hours that do go into that, and we, we actually for the first time last year, I think we developed a, a template where, where people have, would have to gone are the days when you just turn up with a wish list and you get the amount you ask for. So, we, so staff developed a template where they had to apply for the funding. If they couldn't, if they struggled with the, with the application then they got one-on-one -on -one assistance with, with someone from the council or someone part of the committee that designed it. And, and we had an interesting situation where, where, and we talked about the Timber Museum and other groups that were being funded and, and Every council across the country fund community groups and there's a purpose for that because there's a need for that. And, the, and those people that do that do an awesome job and, and really, realistically from my point of view, are quite heavily underfunded as well. And there are some groups on the fringe that miss out because we haven't got that money, we haven't got enough money to spread around. So I think the funding for them is, is critical for their survival. Because if we don't have them, people like the house shuttle people will just slip. They'll just slip under and we, we can't help them. You know, and so they're vital, vital to what we need here in the community. Yeah. Question, and each one of your questions is different. 
and we've done that deliberately so that people don't have the time to sit for a quarter of an hour for them to wait for the uh, same question. Um, and then we'll ask you those questions and we'll see if you need to be pretty much. So, can you have a bit of again? So, two minutes. Good evening, everyone. And thank you, Ray, very much for inviting the chair for organising this night. Um, I know I don't have a particularly large voice. Can you hear me at the Waving hands, but okay. So, my name is Marie Farrell. I, um, I'm a born and bred local as well. Um, my parents are not born actually, I was born in Scotland, and my father is Irish, my mother is a uh, Kiwi from Wellington. And they met in Scotland and decided to move back to New Zealand and they landed in Tokara because it was a thriving modern town. And um, my mother was a nurse, but she went on to, they had 11 children, so she became a full time mother. Um, and they set out Broly Logging and then later moved into farming. So my background was that as a child on farm in Tarpaka. Um, I did all the things the local kids still do now. My children are, um, I've got four daughters and one son, and they, they're all sort of live, living that same sort of lifestyle I had. We had we a calf club, rode horses, um, we went swimming in the Waimaka Liddy River at the back of the farm, and um, went through school of music and um, had lots of the local opportunities. And it's great to see those things still going, especially with um, the Pachari School of Music, that's a favourite of mine. Um, and I went through school at St Mary's, a few years after Gary, and then, um, <laughs> and then Pachari, <laughs> and Pachari College, back when it was a high school actually, when Gavin Muckle and Brian Simpson were the principal and deputy there. And um, it was a great town to grow up in, but it was an even more exciting town to leave as a teenager. And, um, and I did, I left and went to university and I studied political science and security studies. And then I travelled for the next few years. Um, I taught English in Korea and was a financial advisor in Ireland and I met my husband. And we came back and settled down for the next few years and had our um, first four children. We've got a quite a big age gap, the our youngest of them. One is two years old, so we had our four daughters, and I spent the next few years working part time at, at the administration manager of the <coughs> Logging and raising the kids and studying. I did a um, honours in public policy and security studies and postgraduate diploma in development and governance. And I was recruited by the Security Intelligence Services and moved to Wellington. Our family moved down there. Um, I can't really speak about that job at all, it's covered under the um, Intelligence and Security Act, the ISA 2017. But I think the easiest way to sort of bridge the gap between how my background and experience and why I'm here tonight are really my first day and my last day in that job. My first day was during the French, the Nice truck attack where 87 people lost their lives as they were walking on the promenade in front of the beach. And it was the height of the ISIS terror campaign. Um, so it was a completely different landscape to now. Um, it was a credible scenario that we could have a threat in New Zealand. Um, and my last day was during the COVID-19 response. And as I said, I think the political landscape's changed and that's what brings me to the challenge and the opportunities. I think the biggest challenge that we actually have at the moment, and I sort of speak from a, a, a policy and a, a governance sort of level, is um, to keep things on track and in the right direction. I think we really have to, at the moment, be careful because things have been going fantastically for years, but we, I think we're at a point where we need to be extremely careful with the policies that are rolling out. And there's a lot of national policies that are affecting our local community. And I think the main ones, um, are, we've got three waters, and we have the review of local governance, and we have a whole raft of um, reforms, and these are once in a generation sort of reforms, that affect our farming community. And I think that it's really, really important that we get these things right and that our voice is heard. And the reason I, I feel compelled to stand for council is, I think my background and experience, and as a local, you know, I, I'm raising my family here, I, this is our area, and I want, um, I want the best for my children. And 
um, the forestry and farming background combined with that knowledge of central government and the policy process, I think I can bring our voice into those reforms, especially at the moment, I think those priorities are three waters, bringing farmers and the primary industry's voice into the Resource Management Act and really bringing the whole community our voice into the review of local governance. And um, I'd like to thank you all for the opportunity to talk tonight and I'd love to speak to people afterwards. So if you do see me in town, feel free to come up and introduce yourselves and afterwards. So thank you. You're probably all wondering where I stand with three waters. Well, I patiently oppose this controversial piece of legislation. Will this be the start? <laughs> Will this be the start of centralising other council activities? Will they take the rubbish collection away from us? Will they put road in under Wakakotai? Will they be hollowing out our council activities? Where's our local voice going? Where's the accountability going? My name is Hans Nailers and I am standing for my second term as your Patero councillor. My first term had a steep learning curve. For example, even though I've been in business for 40 years as a dairy farmer, done my GST all the time, sent the budgets to the bank, trying to understand local council accounting processes reports gave me a headache. <laughs> the last term was marked by the COVID pandemic that affected us all, but staff and council were able to carry on with the essential services in the drink water uh, department and the wastewater treatment stations. And you know, many things between staff and council were done with Zoom or by teams. For the next term, I see another kind of turbulence. The government is poking the fingers in our business. Three reforms are being worked on that Marie already mentioned. The Resource Management Act gets an overhaul, while well, basically it's tripling the bureaucracy. You've heard me talking about uh, three waters, and then Nani Amahuta wants to see a local government reform. This will give staff and councillors a lot of extra work to discuss these proposals from central government and we have to respond to them via several submissions. Before submissions go out, council will engage with you and all the other San Bacato district residents, engage your opinion. I firmly believe we want to keep our own identity. We have made this district from hard graft. Built our businesses here, built our homes here, and to this point I will endeavour to protect our interests. I sincerely hope, and I'm quite optimistic, that Council will get 11 intelligent and wise people around the table to deliberate on the very demanding exercises that we may that we have to pay towards these legal reforms. I've only got a few more minutes to speak, I think, and I want to leave some time for questions. No, we're not doing questions. Good, Maybe, so I can talk a bit longer. <laughs> I want to mention youth and environment. Our youth is our future. Um, I've got six kids and a heap of grandchildren, and I like to see them succeed. In Tokoroa, we're building the Toy Ohomai Institute, a polytechnic, where young people, and maybe the not so young people, can learn a trade. And I'm lo looking very much forward for that institute to start its business. On the other side of the spectrum, Gary, uh, Sandra and I have pushed the council hard to modernise our skateboard and finally that contract has been signed off and I'm looking forward for our kids to bring the skateboards and their bikes and their scooters towards 
to our new skateboard. Some of you might find it odd that a farmer will come to the council advocating on environmental sustainability. But I strongly believe us farmers can strike a balance, hang on Mary, can strike a balance, can strike a balance between feeding the population and looking after our environment. It's me in council that pushes the buttons on sustainability, emissions, waste reduction, recycling initiatives, because we have only one earth and we have to look after our resources intelligently. Hang on, Mary. Raven <laughs> said I could talk longer. No, I said that. You said that just before. <laughs> the rate pays <laughs> the rate pays of our district and in fact any district He has put this in council. Can we just yep. agree on that? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's what you need to do with that. But the rate pays in our district district are pushed hard to an ever increasing local tax rates tax. I sincerely believe that the funding model for local governments is flippin' outdated. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be pretty brief in the in, in the reason for that and I only put in a late nomination for for, for council I didn't intend to but then I thought I looked at the numbers and population bases and checked the numbers out and I thought, well, it's going to be a battle of trying to win the mayoralty, so I still wanted to have a presence and offer something to the to, uh, to council on Potato's behalf. So that's why I put in for that for that um, for the, the late nomination for the Potato Award. So I guess we have um, and like Hans has alluded to we, we have done, we, we've met everything that we thought we needed to meet by before we went to the council meeting. So we met for, met for half an hour before, had a coffee and decided what we were going to, what we were going to support and what we were going to push for on behalf of our residents here. So I just, um, that's, that's at the back of it and I think for Potarity you've got a pretty special opportunity here. We can have three elected members in a mayor. But I'm only just saying it quietly. <laughs> but um, but I, I, that was that. And my, my, I guess in real reality, my priority and my, my desire, I think, is for the mayoralty. But I still think, regardless of if Artemis wins, then I still think that I have something to offer council. So, but in order for that to happen, I still have to finish in the top three. But if I get the mayor's job, We'll still get three elected members, but that's, that's, that's how you have to work it out. And I think as far as the governance and that is concerned, I, I sat on two whānau trusts, or one for my my wife's whānau, where I was the chair over in Whakatāne, and one in Tapuna for my dad's whānau, where I held the finance portfolio. I've Finished the one over in Tauranga on my father's side when I first ran for council, and I've only just rescinded the, or resigned from the role as a chairman of my wife's trust. I had to go over on, on Monday to pay some bills because the new trustees and chairman haven't been admitted to the, by the, by the Motor Land Corp, but you have, you have to go do. So I guess from that, that's the experience that I have. And I was a chairman, like I said earlier, in my, my mayoralty delivery that the credit union in South Waikato started off here. They started off here in, uh, was the Potaradu Catholic Credit Union. Then it went to Tokoroa Potaradu Catholic Credit Union. And then Credit Union in South Waikato. So that's where I come from. And I remember 13, well, when I was still at high school before I got shipped off to boarding school, having to get on my bike and ride around town to collect $2 off, $2 was a lot of money back in those days, to, for people in their handbooks, filling their handbooks and then for the credit union so it could be banked on the Friday. And it was always around the payday. So, um, and I think, you know, the challenges in that, we know what the challenges are. Again, Hans, you know, about 10 minutes that he had. 
<laughs> the local government reform in uh, three waters, they're going to be huge. And uh, look, we just gotta, we've just got to work on that going forward and make sure that we don't lose. Asset retention is huge. So that's about for me. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Sandra Wallace and I'm proud to be re-standing as a councillor for the Batadaroo Ward. I've enjoyed the last three years on council and love to be re-elected and continue on this journey with the knowledge I have gained. On a personal level, I'm a, I'm a mother of three grown children and two grandsons. I enjoy walking, gardening, reading and voluntary work. I belong to Rotary and I am a driver for Meals on Wheels. I've lived here most of my life and also attended Batadaroo High School and raised a family here. I sit on a few committees for council, which includes the steering committee for the new skate park, which will turn soil very shortly. I've been council rep on Pride and Taro and council rep on the South Dakota Arts Trust. I have 100% attendance for all council meetings. I'm proud to say I'm the only one that can say that. <laughs> council has rezoned rural land to make all residential and commercial areas which were very badly needed. Houses are popping up on Maple Drive. It's exciting to see. The new industrial zone south of the old Carter Holt Harvey site is almost ready to go and in attracting interest. Buttermilk has done great things at the old Carter Holt Harvey site. 34 businesses are located there now and 100 people employed. The new industrial site will attract new businesses which will lead to more employment opportunities. As I go around and talk to local employers in town, they're telling me their biggest challenge is staff. They can't get staff. The new trade training centre in Tokoroa will give us great opportunity for locals to learn a trade. With new housing, people will come to town and should help address the staffing shortage. The challenge of having a lack of housing and by opening up new residential areas gives us an opportunity for new housing to be built. It's important to keep investing in our infrastructure with these new developments happening. Another challenge I see is our CBD. Online shopping has changed the way people shop and retail stores have disappeared over the years. People take a trip out of town and have a day away. The opportunities I see there is that we need to look at attracting businesses to town that either can share a large premise or have diversity in what they offer. So it's financially beneficial to, fit up, to set up here in Pataradu. We can ask people what they like to see and approach these types of businesses to come to town. Perhaps a pop-up shop for starters. With increased population, particularly for the elderly, we need to give opportunities for specialist fields to come to town. Optometrists and audio hearing type businesses are needed in our town. With an increased population, Pataradu will be a more profitable place for people to invest. Continuing looking after our buildings by water blasting and painting will give our town a more visual appeal. We have a group of volunteers doing this, including myself, and this will continue as the weather gets warmer. Council has invested wisely in our three waters, and we're not in favour of supporting the three waters reform as an existing as, an, as its existing proposal. Losing our three waters will lose our local voice, and the South of Canada who has looked after our waters will not be better off. Our people are saying no. The new South Dakota District Council CEO has said she'd like to see councils take a more leadership role in the community. I 100% agree with this. And if we elected, I would love to have a more leadership role moving <coughs> forward in our district. One of my focus areas in the last three years and moving forward is youth. And I wish to continue along this journey, looking for more opportunities to make Pataru a better place for our youth. We have the skate park coming, and in the 23-24, a, a basketball court has been approved. Looking after our elderly is very important, and we need to ensure our footpaths are well maintained. I visit our council pension flats regularly, as I believe it's important that we take care of our most vulnerable people in our community. An exciting thing that's coming up is we're getting new entrance signs for our town, so this will give our district a warm welcome and encourage people to stop. Communication is important and I will continue to share knowledge on council happenings through Facebook, through meetings. The Prattler has a regular custom councillor column. We need to ensure we are listening to our people. 
The difference between governance and management is that management is the care of daily operations, business as usual, looking after our infrastructure, parks, whereas governance is ensure council makes good decisions, assets are protected and funds used appropriately. I believe after three years I've learnt a lot in this space and have been on different boards over the years. I believe I bring many skills including experience, confidence, knowledge, a financial background and grassroots experiences. I have owned a business, I've owned three businesses over the years and have had 25 years of banking experience. As a team, we can create great things. We live here because we love it here. Thank you. Can you tell us what you think is the role, and you've sort of answered this in a way, but just a chance to expand on it, what do you think is the role of local government in shaping the future and success of our communities? I think, as I said before, it's about making the right base decisions. So the governance at the moment, we, we have got these once in a generation reforms, and if we set that, you know, set those decisions and we pave the way <coughs> Clearly forward, it's going to be easy for the council and for the community to say with the water if we can retain our assets and invest um, in our water without losing our assets and increasing the cost of water. We can, and, and also with these housing developments, it's going to be easier for people to come to town to deal with the council to deal with permits. You know, creating that that basic management level at the bottom. Um, so I think that the the challenge for us will be to have the energy and the get the right experience and the right people in to be able to um, have our voices and come to the community and be the link between the community to make sure that we do get those policies and reforms right so that they fit our community. So I think that reach into um, representing everyone, and someone said it before, you know, we, we're a really diverse community. We've got all age groups, all types, and we've got lots we've got lots and lots of groups. So actually going out without our own agendas and meeting with people and um, really being that voice that links our local council. And I think we're at a point too, we're in a unique position where councils are some of the few areas that are being heard by the government because they can't ignore us. At the moment there is a bit of a pattern that there's lack of transparency and accountability but councils can actually make a difference in reform. So if we can be really organised and hit the ground running with those reforms, particularly through waters, then I think that's going to make a really big difference for setting that groundwork for great governance and great policy that then our future, and it is because it's once in a generation reform, if we can get that right then our, you know, our community, our children are going to thrive. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. What ideas have you personally brought into the council, brought to the council table, that have been turned into projects and completed or put into action? You personally. Me personally? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> well, the main thing is I livened up the whole bloody discussion. <laughs> it's got a boring, a boring set of swords over there, so <clears throat> at least it's got a bit lined in. Um, like I said, Gary, uh, Sandra and I have pushed for Patera the water park um, and the, the skate bowl. That thing had to be uh, modernised, even though the skate bowl in Patera had a very long history, one of the first ones in New Zealand for that quality, um, but it's been old and has got a few cracks. So that skate bowl has been lingering for a while to get modernised. Uh, we pushed it through, right? and like I said, I've got six kids and a pile of grandchildren. Um, the water park, we feel very uh, triumphant that the water park is now recreated. It is not quite finished yet. There's some home still being assembled somewhere, hopefully, along the line. But we're pushing hard for that one as well. Um, and that's in Pitero, it's a little bit. I was hoping to get the previous question because I had already a long story on the previous one. <laughs> but this is a very simple question. So, for the, on the previous question, I would like to say... <laughs> I had a different, a different angle to it. Local government is very good for community groups that have, or, that's already been mentioned. 
and I support the community groups. When I was a farmer, I was just in the pit milking cows, listening to the rock, or sometimes not already, but you don't learn a lot. Now you've been in council, and you pick up a lot, but you see how many people in our district are working for community groups, and I've been part of it as well, in the local day group in Tiro, and we set up the domain. It's not for Kedero, but it is for Tiro, and that was it already done. <laughs> How would you make sure you communicate widely in our town and confidently represent the town's ideas? Take yeah. about 35 minutes and answer one minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just ask Sandra. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that, that, that's probably it. No wonder Sandra wanted to put her hand up. But, <laughs> and, and I guess Hans and I, it, it was part of our strategy. We <laughs> left Sandra to all the selfies. <laughs> Yeah, sort of get a coffee before we go to every meeting. <laughs> but communication, I know communication is key, and I just say that flippantly, really, because um, I guess if there's one criticism from people that, I guess, and, and, and I guess that's trying to do things when, you've, when you're holding down a full-time job. And, and, and um, on that note, I depart from Terra on the 17th of September. So, and, and I, and it's, it's just, no, I'm not preempting anything, of course, but I just, to do what I'm doing in the campaign, I need to give it 100%, and communication is the key to success. If you don't have, have that, then you get nowhere. People need to know. And, and, I, and I totally accept that. Someone has done a wonderful job with, um, with putting everything out there. Hans hasn't got Facebook for obvious, for, for obvious reasons because he'd be too long on there, he'd probably be getting booted off. But, but I guess, and, 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 I, and I, I wholeheartedly believe that communication is a key. And we talked to a few people on Saturday night and, and, and with Robbie and, and Rachel on Saturday night. And, and it was awesome. And, and we're pushing a story where we want to shop local but we don't want to use our local trades mm -hmm. and it's detrimental to our district. Mm -hmm. So we need to work on that better than we do. That's it. Thank you. What new ideas do you have to bring to the council table if you are re-elected? What ideas have you consulted on for the next term to enliven, encourage or develop our community? Okay, as I said, um, that last question would have done me really good. Um, so, through Facebook, which I use as quite a um, way to communicate, I have actually gone out to the community and said, what would you like to see in Batata do? So one of the areas I went out to was, for the youth and for our children, what would you like to see in Batata do? So the people have come back and said they'd like to see more activities for our older youth. So I definitely think that we need to start looking at things for our older youth. For our younger children, people are saying that our playgrounds, they like to see something a bit more exciting in our playgrounds. Our playgrounds are very basic. So definitely, uh, moving forward, I'd like to keep focusing on our youth and in our children and bring more things available for our youth and our children. Um, the other thing is too that I've gone out and asked people, what would you like to see in Matalu? So I've actually have asked that question as well. So, and it does come back to some of the other things I talked about in my speech. People would like to see um, the elderly would like to see better footpaths, so I definitely want to keep pushing that we get improvement in our footpaths. People on their scooters, they find it difficult with some of the holes and some of the bumps on our footpaths, so I'm definitely going to push our footpaths so we have those to a higher standard. And the other thing that I'd like to push is also our CBD, and I've also talked about that. And I've gone out to the community and asked people, what would you like to see? And people would like to see that would like our CBDs updated, have something more exciting in our CBDs, not have to travel out of town to do all the things. Why not have it in Batalu? Why not have more retail and things exciting in our town so that people don't have to travel? So definitely I'd like to see um, and push for more things for our youth and more things for our CBD and... Um, I just want to thank you all for coming out. I hope that you've gained something from tonight that makes you really look at your voting and deciding what you want to do, what things are that you believe in, um, and what you think would be best for our town. We invite you now, there's the rotary, you've got tea and coffee organised at the back, and we thank you for that. 
Um, there's some food there that Kimberly and Linda have put together. They spent the day baking for you. That's a lie. That is a lie. Um, we invite you now to mingle as guests at our candidates with our residents. Just to have a cup of tea and enjoy the room together and ask some questions if you wish to. Thank you all for being here and thank you all again. Let's give our candidates.